What a great time. What a great time. What a great time. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father God, for Christmas, for the celebration of Christmas. Thank you for the gathering of families together, Lord. Thank you for every opportunity that we have, Father, together in your name, Lord. We want to praise you. We want to thank you, Lord, for this freedom that we have, Father, even though it is limited, Lord, but we are grateful to you for open doors for us, Father, where no man can shut. We want to thank you for the spirit of celebration. We thank you for life that you have given to us, Father, and life more abundantly through Christ Jesus, our Lord and our God. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Good morning, church. Good morning. Let me this morning speak to you again on Christmas because we are still in this Christmas month. And as we are coming to a close, friends, we are heading into a new year. We all are waiting to go into a new year. And we want to remind us again that this is a season of transitions. A season of transition. All right. So what is transition? The definition is it is the process or a period of changing from one state or condition to another. To move or to change. You know, King? Solomon in Ecclesiastes 3, we are very familiar with this portion of scripture, 3 verse 1 to 8. He reminds us again that there is a season for everything under the sun. Season to be born, a season to die, a season to mourn, and a season to laugh, a season of war, a season of peace. Hallelujah. So there is a season in everything in our lives. And friends, we need to move as the Holy Spirit helps us, God enables us, we need to move on and we need to move into this transition smoothly in our lives. Every one of us, from the youngest, from children to adults to the elderly, we all need transitions in our lives. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So God is going to help us. Amen. This morning, let us look at the text taken from Luke chapter 2, verse 8 to verse 20. Okay, God desires us to do a few transitioning in our lives. And this morning, I pray that we all will open our heart, even as we, we had worshipped the Lord and we have experienced His glory. Let us continue to open our heart to receive the word that God has for us. Praise Him. The first point I want to talk about is to, God wants to transition us from the ordinary to the extraordinary. Okay, Luke chapter 2, verses 8 and 9. That night, in a field near Bethlehem, there were shepherds watching over their flocks. Suddenly, an angel of the Lord appeared in radiant splendor before them, lighting up the field with the blazing glory of God. The glory of God shone round about them in that dark night. Friends, the glory of God that night was a visible, tangible presence of God. And what the shepherds started out that night was an ordinary night. It was an ordinary night shift, a cold winter's night. And the shepherds, they were just doing their job. When God broke through in a very extraordinary way, you know, suddenly the dark black night sky in Bethlehem, this dark sky that was ruled by powers and foreign power, darkness, it exploded with the brilliance of an angel as the angel came and spoke to the shepherds that night. You know, today, in our situation, in the world today, facing this crisis of pandemic and this doom and this gloom of this uninvited foreign power of COVID-19, skies over us seem black. It seems dark. It seems like we cannot look and see what's ahead for us in the year to come, in the years to come. You know, when will the borders be open? Those of you who, who wish to travel, I mean, we are itching to go out and to venture, to have adventure in our lives. We are wondering, when is this going to be possible for us? It seems dark. But, you know, we, we accept it now as being ordinary. God will turn this situation into something extraordinary in our lives. What we need to do, dear friends, at this point in time, we need to open our hearts and we need to rely on the Lord and to allow the Spirit of Christ 
to come into our lives. Allow Christ to come in and to bring in, lift us up with his hope and his joy and his peace, with his light. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There is yet hope for tomorrow. There is yet hope for 2021. Hallelujah. As the year is coming to an end, something least expected. God can come and turn it into something extraordinary. You know, to God, nobodies are somebody. Nobodies are somebody. The shepherds were nobody. They, 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 they were the low class. They, they just had a very menial job. Poor, meager earning from day to day. They were just nobodies. But God chose to come down to speak to them, to move them from ordinary living into extraordinary living. Hallelujah. My challenge to you is let our lives be extraordinary. Let your friends and your neighbors and your family see you this during this time of celebration that truly Christians are different. You live and you lead extraordinary lives. Praise the Lord. Secondly, God wants us to transition from fear to faith. From fear to faith. Luke chapter 2, verses 9 and 10. Suddenly, an angel of the Lord appeared in radiant splendor before them, lighting up the field with the blazing glory of God, and the shepherds were terrified. They were terrified. But the angel reassured them, saying, Don't be afraid, for I have come to bring you good news, the most joyous news the world has ever heard. And this Joyous news is for everyone, everywhere. Hallelujah. I love this. I love this. That God's message of joy. Do not be afraid. I've come to bring you good news, great joy. And this is for everyone, everywhere. That is our God. The God that we love and that we call our Messiah. He has come for everyone, everywhere. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. You know, the shepherds were afraid when they saw the angel. They were afraid of judgment. They thought, what is this? Is God going to judge us? Did we do something wrong? You know, there are two reasons for them not to be afraid. Okay, two reasons for them not to be afraid. Because number one, it was the glory of God that surrounded them. In this dark night, they were suddenly surrounded by the glory of God. Just the physical presence of God in their lives. By, by, by the presence of the angel and the bright glory of God should remove their fear. This realization that God is in their midst. Okay? We need not, friends, we need not be afraid of COVID-19 or any disease or the end of the world or the end of the age that, is, that, that, that comes upon us. We need not be afraid because we need to realize that God is in control, that God is with us. Hallelujah. The very presence of God and the atmosphere of His presence surround us day and night. Hallelujah. We are children of the living God. So with this, friends, we need not be afraid of what the future holds. We need not be afraid of our tomorrows because God holds it in the palm of his hand. You know, Paul, when he was in prison, we know we have spoken this over the past few months, many times referred to in the book of Acts, how Paul was tortured, beaten, thrown into prison for his faith and his proclamation of the gospel of Jesus. But you know what? In the prison, the epistles that he wrote out, the letters that he wrote to the Christian church, the time even to us today, he speaks. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 6, Paul says, And God has raised us up with Christ and seated us with him in heavenly realms, in Christ Jesus. We are seated with Christ in the heavenly realm. That is our position as Christians. That is our position as children of the living God. So do not bow down to fear, but rather, rather have faith in your hearts, have belief in the word of God, that God has seated us spiritually in the heavenly realms with Christ Jesus. The enemy is under our feet and it is in control. Hallelujah. God is in control. Praise him. Praise him. So do not be afraid. We need not be afraid. Even 
King David. David, when he was in the wilderness, running away from King Saul, when he was a shepherd, you know, he wrote the Psalms and in it, in it he said, you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. It, friends, this is so amazing. So amazing, the presence of God in our lives during this pandemic time, during this, this time of lockdown and we are restricted in our movements. But you know, we can still sit down and have a good meal with the family. We can thank God for His provision. We hold hands and we are grateful for everything the Lord has given to us, even an appetite for good food. For even God has prepared a table before us in the presence of our enemies. So we thank God for that. We thank God that He is a good, good Heavenly Father. Friends, I pray that as we celebrate this Christmas time together and the new year and coming into the new year, together with your family, together with your loved ones, gather around the table and give thanks to God. Be grateful for what He is doing in our lives and in each one of us, in each one of our families. Praise Him. And the Word of God. The Word of God, secondly, the angel brought. The Word of God encourages us. The Word of God sustains us. The Word of God lifts us up every time. Hallelujah. Verse 10. The angel reassured them, saying, Don't be afraid, for I have come to bring you good news, the most joyous news the world has ever heard. And it is for everyone everywhere. Hallelujah for everyone, everywhere. Good news. This is good news. Christ has come. This is good news. He is the Messiah. He is God with us. Emmanuel. Hallelujah is our Savior. He has come and we hold on to this word. We celebrate this special time together. This is the best news the world has ever heard or ever will hear. My dear friends, so this news moves us from faith to faith. The news that we hear every day on media, the news that we hear every day on our apps and messaging, a uh, number of COVID cases on the rise in here, in Selangor, in Malaysia, around the world, and we give in very easily to fear. But rather, let us focus. Let us focus on the Word of God. Let us focus on the goodness of the Lord, our Savior. And let us remember the angel of the Lord again remind us, do not fear. My dear friends, do not fear. Hallelujah. Because God has come to give us good news. The most joyous news to all the world. For everyone and everywhere. Amen. Amen. So let us move from fear to faith. From fear to faith. Amen. The transition that I'm talking about, thirdly, is a transition of being victims to being victorious. Yes, exactly. God does not want us to dwell with a victim mentality. Oh, I cannot do this. I'm I have a lack of this. Uh, because of uh, this RMCO, you know, uh, my 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 um, I'm restricted in movement. I cannot go and do the things I used to do. You know, friends, we thank God. In Malaysia, we are still able to go out to go to your go out to your normal grocers or your local markets with the proper social distancing, of course, wearing your mask, sanitize your hands or whatever, keep yourself safe, and then we can go out and we can buy the things that we need for our families, come home and prepare good meals for the home and for the children. Even we can get good, we can get some gifts during this Christmas time and Christmas season for your loved ones. Such a wonderful time. So we are not victims, my dear friends. Let us be victorious. We did the triumphant conference that we are victorious in Christ Jesus. Let this victory mindset be on each one of us this day. And coming into the new year, we must walk in victory. Dear friends, I encourage us to put on the mindset of a victor, more than conqueror through Christ Jesus, our Lord. See the shepherds. They were a fellowship of the forgettable. They are people that society do not want to, to, to mingle with. You know, during this uh, Bible time, shepherds had no status in their culture. They were uneducated. Um, they were unclean. They considered low class. No hope for advancement in their careers. 
I mean, what career is there? Just to watch sheep at night, okay? Right. And um, they were outcasts. They were misfits in society. Even spiritually, they were considered unclean. They were not allowed to participate in uh, feasts, in uh, temple celebrations, okay? They cannot. Uh, they could not even be allowed as a witness in court because they are considered as thieves. They were Their testimonies would not be reliable. These were the very people that God chose to show up that Christmas night. Oh my Lord, what a wonderful God we have. We cannot fathom the love and compassion of God, our Heavenly Father. Hallelujah, hallelujah. You know, He came and He brought them. He brought them this good news and made them declare it to all the other people around them. He changed them. He changed them without their acknowledgement. He changed them without their invitation. They didn't say, God, reveal yourself to us. No, God chose to reveal himself and the good news of his coming, his first coming to earth, to a lowly shepherd in Bethlehem. Wonderful God, wonderful God. So he can transition us from being victims to victorious people. Ah, amen, amen. The fourth thing that God desires for us, my dear friends, is to transition us from sadness to gladness. From sadness to gladness. Luke chapter 2 verse 10. For I have come to bring you good news, the most joyous news the world has ever heard. Hallelujah. The world has ever heard. The most joyous news, God says, I have come to bring it to you. It is always in the heart of God to bring his joy into mankind. Joy to the world. The Lord is come. Let earth receive her king. Hallelujah. Let every heart prepare him room. Heaven and angels sing. Heaven and angels sing. Joy to the world. Amen. So do not be afraid. God wants to lift us up out of sadness to gladness. And he wants to move us from hangovers to hallelujahs. Hallelujahs. That we can live our lives praising God, blessing God with a smile on our faces and the joy of the Lord be our strength. This is what God wants to do for us. Yes, we go through hard times. Yes, we will not be able to escape tribulation or sadness. You know, some of us during this MCO time have lost loved ones. You have lost your father or mother, brother or sister, mother-in-law, father-in-law, husband. You know, it's been sad. Sad. And um, lost jobs. Maybe some of you may have lost your jobs and you have to shift some of you may have seen your friends losing jobs and you worry for them. You know, you shift from uh, uh, from one job to another looking for a, uh, a way for God to provide for your family. You worry about bills. You're worried about year to come. What's going to happen? Are the children able to go to school? Is my son going to continue in university? You know, things like that. And there are more troubles that I can ever imagine. Uh, I can ever mention. But you know what? The Lord is with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. He promised to be with you. Like I said just now, in the presence of your enemy, God says he can prepare a table before you and you can feast before God. You can just thank him and enjoy his presence and just cling on to him and know that he is your source and he is your provider. He will have a good hope and a future for each one of us. So don't worry he wants to take away our sadness and put his gladness into our lives. And how can we find this joy? Where can we find this joy? It's not found in our Christmas songs, our Christmas feasting. Yeah, yeah, we do find a bit of joy and happiness there. But it is mainly found in, not in Christmas gifts and presents. Yeah, you do find happiness and some joy. Especially you get what you wanted, what you secretly desired. You are thrilled. But you know what? Our joy and our satisfaction is found in the person of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Our Lord and Savior, the, the Lord who loves us, who gave his very life for us. Hallelujah. The lover of our soul. 
He is where our joy is found. So if you are in Christ, you are acknowledging the Lord and you are loving Him and you are, you, you are seeking His face, His presence, His joy will lift you up and take away your sadness and fill your hearts with gladness. Amen. You will, Luke chapter 2, verses 12 to 14, you will recognize Him by this miracle sign. You will find a baby wrapped in strips of cloth and lying in a feeding trough. This baby Jesus Joy is found in him. And all at once, a vast number of glorious angels, in verse 13, the, appeared, the very armies of heaven, and they all praised God, singing, Glory to God in the highest realms of heaven, for there is peace and a good hope given to the sons of men. Glory to God in the highest realms of heaven, peace and good hope given to the sons of of men. Amen. This joy is found all wrapped up in Jesus, in the person Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. The angel, the, the moment the angel told them, told the shepherds where to find this joy, the whole choir of angels burst into the sky singing loudly, glory to God, glory to God in the highest heaven. First Thessalonians 5.16, again, the word of God reminds us and tells us to be joyful always. Pray continually. Give thanks in all circumstance, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. My dear friends, in Christ Jesus, we will find our joy. We will find answers to our prayer, where our anxieties will be taken away, where our sadness will be replaced with hope and joy and peace. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. My last point this morning, number five. God desires to transition us from pointlessness to purposefulness. From pointlessness to purposefulness. Luke chapter 2, verse 15 to 18. When the choir of angels disappeared back to heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go! Let's hurry and find this word that is born in Bethlehem and see for ourselves what the Lord has revealed to us. Friends, many times we have to see for ourselves. You need to taste the Lord and find that He is good. You need to taste the miracles that God has for you in your life. You need to see and taste the answers to prayer. And you know the Lord is faithful to you. You know, so they ran into the village and found their way to Mary and Joseph. And there was the baby lying in a feeding trough. Verse 17, upon seeing this miraculous sign, the shepherds recounted what had happened. And everyone who heard the shepherd's story, my, they were astonished by what they were told. Now, everyone who heard the shepherd's story, they were astonished. They were amazed by what was told. Why? Because God was with them in their testimony. You know, the Lord did a miracle among the shepherd boys. They were, they were nothing, you know, they were, they, they were considered as nothing in society. They were misfit. They were not, not, you know, uh, not good enough to listen to. Their testimonies were not worth it, but because God invaded them and God made them from ordinary people to be extraordinary. Their experience with God, the, the touch of glory in their hearts. They, they saw the angels and the angels proclaimed the good news to them and they went and they saw the baby Jesus and they worshipped him. When they came back, friends, their lives were changed and transformed. Miraculously, they were able to share the testimony that God has come in the form of the baby Jesus. And People listen to them. Now, their testimonies were heard. Their lives were changed from being pointless to purposefulness. Now they had a purpose in their lives. And I want you to know, my dear friends, God wants to have each one of our lives a purposeful life. He wants us to live purposefully. That You have a reason for living. You are not just existing through, throughout 2020. We are just existing. No, God wants to fill us with His Spirit and fill us with His joy and His peace and His presence. 
change our lives, transform us, transition us. And when we come into the new year, my dear friends, you are going to be living your life purposefully for the Lord, purposefully for the kingdom of God. Praise God. When you find the Savior, just as the shepherds found the Savior, they had a heavenly purpose. We seek God. We seek God. Our heavenly purpose is to seek God more, to love Him more, to know Him more, to experience Him more, and to share His goodness, to share His love to friends far and near, to your loved ones, your family, your neighbors, those around you may also find their purpose in life. My dear friends, I leave you with this message for the coming, for the end of this year and into the coming year and pray that God by His Holy Spirit will lead us astounded, will lead us amazed, will lead our hearts, our minds, our lives so filled with His goodness and His presence that we, we just know with this confidence in our lives as we walk and as we live 2020 and we walk into 2021, God is going to be with us. The Lord by His Holy Spirit and His Holy Presence will be with us and envelop us and He will leave us astounded and amazed at His goodness. Friends, just open your lives to Him. Just open your hearts to Him. And I pray that God will speak to each one of us. Our transitionings will be good. Will be good because they are ordered by the Lord. The Word of God reminds us again and again, the steps of a good man, they are ordered by the Lord. So let God order us, lead us and guide us that we are no longer subject to fear, but we are subject to faith. We are people of faith. We are people of hope. Amen. We are people of joy. Praise God. And we are able to move into 2021 with faith, acknowledging the presence and glory of God in us and the Word of God strengthening us, empowering us, and leading us on. Thank you. Thank you. I pray for your people. Lord, I pray for your church at this time. Let us just take a few minutes and just, just lift up our hearts to the Lord. Let this not just be another service. It is not another religious thing that we do. But God, we so desire you, Lord. We so desire you to come and transform us, transition us, Lord, to lead us on, dear God. Father, I just pray that you will speak to your children, to your people, the uncle, the auntie, the brother, the sister, the young man and the young girl, Lord, seeking your presence, seeking the truth in your word, Lord, wanting to know you in an even deeper measure. I pray, O oh God, that you will lead us, each one of us, from glory to glory, from victory to victory. Lord, transitioning us, O oh God, making a move and a change in our lives, Father, for the better, for the better, from faith to faith. And at the end, Lord, we want to give you all the glory and all the praise because, Lord, your presence is with us. Thank you, Father. Let the joy of the Lord be our strength. Let each one of your children be victorious, O God, in everything that they do. Lord, bless the works of the hands of your children, Lord, and answer all their hearts' cry and all their prayers. In Jesus' wonderful name I pray. Amen. Amen. So I pray the Lord bless you, and the Lord keep you, cause His face to shine upon you, be gracious to you, may His countenance be on you, and grant you peace in all your homes. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. So have a good week and enjoy the end of the year. We look forward to seeing you during our Watch Night service. Hallelujah. So, adios. See you again. God bless. Love you.